So I saw Venom Let There Be Carnage, and this movie is directed by Andy Serkis, who, if you watch The Jungle Book, you'll know that he is a very talented director. But under the dictatorship of Sony, I knew that even he wouldn't be able to make a good movie out of the directives they've given him. So I don't blame him for my final thoughts on this movie. So the movie opens with a pretty cool tone that easily could have belonged to a horror movie, but then I noticed that the scene was so choppily edited that my worst fears were immediately confirmed. That this movie was supposed to be a lot longer, but Sony ordered that they cut the movie down to one hour and 30 minutes because they wanted it to play more times in theatres. So that alone botched a lot of this movie because it feels like it's in a rush to go from one scene to the next. I kept checking my watch, 20 minutes in, nothing happens, 30 minutes in, still nothing has really happened, and we have an hour left of the movie to go at this point. An hour in, and some small stuff has happened, but aside from Carnage and Shriek escaping, nothing else has happened with regards to the plot. Just a bunch of forced filler. Like when Anne calls Eddie to meet with her, and she just totally ambushes him and shows him the rings and says that she's getting married to Dan. And that's the only reason she called him down. I mean, she could have sent him an invite or texted him, but no, she brings her ex here, gives him the impression that she wants to go out with him again, and then she completely ambushes him and says that she's getting married. And then she says this. You could just say congratulations, I'm happy for you. You know, like, two people who still care enough about each other to lie so that the other one doesn't feel like complete shit. I, I mean, maybe we could do that version of this. And then she plays coy. She says, You just don't change, do you? What are you talking about? This is just a, it's a huge shock. I'm, I'm in, and I'm in love with you. It's a lot to process. You no, know, the truth is you don't love anybody. You can't. Commitment's just not your thing. And then he plays her game and straight up tells her, All right, then fine. Do not marry Dan. And then she comes out with this. Dan makes me feel safe. Ugh. What the hell am I watching right now? This is one of the most nonsensical couples conversations I've ever seen in my life. I mean, when Mary Jane played this game to get Peter to make a move, she was just going out with a guy. She wasn't engaged to him. But here, Anne is playing the exact same game right after she is engaged. What was her goal here? I'm in love with you. It's a lot to process. You no, know, the truth is you don't love anybody. You can't. Commitment's just not your thing. Alright, then fine. Do not. Marry Dan. Dan makes me feel safe. Ugh. I also didn't even like Tom Hardy as Eddie Brock in this. He was just okay to me in the first movie, but he was just really annoying here. And both he and especially Venom were just yelling and making noise throughout the whole thing. And Venom really bothered me in this film. He never stops talking, and the jokes they have him make, and the way he keeps talking about his feelings, I'm sorry, but it makes him come across as a bitch. And then he goes off feeling sad like a Disney prince who is down on his luck. I wish you could have seen me tonight. Riff raff, street rat, I don't buy that. I thought Woody Harrelson did a great job as Cletus Cassidy, but he could have been so much better if he had a good script. And was I the only one who questioned the scene where the symbiote connects itself to a laptop and hacks a police database? Since when were the symbiotes upgrade from Ben 10? And since when does Carnage spin like a tornado? I did really like though that the Carnage symbiote does not work with Cassidy. They are clearly not functioning as a unit, and that made for an interesting dynamic, but we didn't get enough of those scenes, and they also didn't go as far as they should have. There is so much stuff in the movie that could have been cool if they elaborated on it, and some action stuff that could have been cool if the movie was rated R. Because you can tell that this movie pulls back on so much stuff that could have made a good movie because Sony tried to make it PG-13 to make more money. Oh, and let's cut the movie down to 1 hour and 30 minutes so we can also make more money. This movie is just one big cash grab, and the idiot producers at Sony can keep comparing their PG-13 Venom films to The Dark Knight all they want. A crime drama can work with the PG-13 rating, a monster movie where monsters butcher and murder a ton of people, you can't make that a PG-13 without seriously comp compromising the film and making a lesser movie in the process. Also, Let There Be Carnage does not push the PG-13 rating anywhere near as much as the first Venom movie. In the first movie, you would half see people get their heads bitten off and half be off screen. Here, it's always off screen, and you never see any of the injuries in this movie, and when you do see it, it's hidden with a bunch of CGI destruction. This right here is the most violent on-screen death in the movie, and you've already seen it in its entirety in the trailer. Also, the trailer used the best shots from the film, because when I was watching, there were a lot of times where the CGI looked very wonky. Now granted, when it looked good, it looked really good, but when it looked bad, it looked really bad. 
The worst of the CGI was when you would see the symbiote tentacles coming from their backs. It's almost like they didn't even try. The biggest problem with this movie is the script. They needed to throw the script out and start over. And if you're making a movie where the main villain is Carnage, then the movie has to be rated R. There's no dancing around that. This is supposed to be a brutal, merciless, and disturbing serial killer. And he's not a PG-13 character. And making him one means that this movie was dead on arrival. This movie was going to get a 1 out of 10 from me, but I did have fun with the climactic battle between Venom and Carnage, and I thought it was definitely a lot better than the climactic fight between Venom and Riot. And that boosted the movie to a 3 out of 10. As much as Sony deny it, that PG-13 rating really has made these films worse. And even if you take the violence out of it, that PG-13 rating is the very reason why Venom is a good guy and why this film is a comedy. So Sony, don't try to use that bullshit excuse as justification for your PG-13 rating. You just want to play it safe and make more money. You might as well just come out and say it because it's so obvious at this point. And your movies have severely suffered because of it. And about that end credit scene, yeah, Venom might show up in the next Spider-Man movie, but I don't care. Seeing Venom in this movie actually made me less interested in seeing him go up against Tom Holland's Spider-Man because, like I said, this movie turned him into a bitch and I want a badass Venom to go up against Spider-Man, not a chicken-loving Disney prince. The PS5 game will be my true Spider-Man vs Venom story and it will be my true Spider-Man movie. And they try to set up a sequel with another symbiote villain and honestly, if you fail with Carnage, none of your other sequels even matter anymore because Carnage was the only symbiote that everyone cared about and if this is the best you can do with him, then I have no hope left for those Venom movies. Get out! Take your stuff! Get out! This is my house! I love you! I love you too! Look at me now! You love me! And I'm free! When I was a kid, I thought the name Sony stood for quality, but when it comes to their movies, boy, that could not be more untrue. One of you finally give me what I desire. Yes, we will. Now that's my true Venom movie. 